They called him the Diesel. Crank up that Diesel! Oh, 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 oh. He leaned across the table and he goes, you need to get me back there. I'll make you famous. Panda Riggins, good hole. He's got the first down to the 40. He's gone. The 35, the 30, the 20. He's gone. He's gone. It's Rigo the Diesel. Well, hello there, and welcome to Rigo the Diesel. I am El Rigo the Diesel, John Riggins. This is episode 28. Larry Michael, just back from Indianapolis, which we're going to jump into in just a second, because I'm pretty curious to find out what Larry uh, found out at the Combine. Um, but before I do that, a couple things. One, the T-Cat will not be with us today. Where's he at? T-Cat is a little R&R in uh, somewhere around Fort Lauderdale, I'm guessing. Him really? and his brother. He's got a brother whom you know, John. I know all his brothers. Yes, you know him. Yeah, and, know them uh, all, the clan. and also a guy that you also know. Dan? Because he does the same thing you do, Dan, Dan Miller. Miller. Longtime friend. We were all together at Westwood One years ago. That's where I met you. Met you at Westwood One, but me and those guys go back a long ways before I met you. So I'm, geez, I don't even want to say 25 years. Yeah, at least I forgot yeah. about Miller in the sense that you would have known him before because he was, I think, Todd's sweet mate uh, when um, T Cat. When I say Todd, it's going to throw people, people off. People don't know who that is. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> when he listeners went to, George to the Mason. podcast don't know. Uh-huh. Listeners to the podcast aren't aware who Todd yeah, is. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, we got 10 pounds of you know what to put in a five pound bag. So the other thing I want to throw in here real quick. Is this morning uh, a little anecdote that happened between my 14 year old daughter and myself that uh, she went out for softball last year? Okay. You know, and uh, so she basically didn't probably know, you know, a whole lot about softball. Not that, you know, for better or worse, but it was a, an elective at school. I think with the other option, she had like lacrosse was an option. She didn't want to do lacrosse, so she went to softball. And it, it, I have to say that the manager of the softball team also happens to be the drama coach, which is where really my daughter is interested. So it's kind of like a little apple polish and going out for softball. I see. You know, butter up the drama coach. But today, she goes... <laughs> <laughs> she goes out of the garage and gets her softball mitt because today's the first day of practice. Today? Oh, today, yeah. Go it cold? Yeah, good luck, right? Maybe they do some stuff in the gym. I don't know. But but she comes in, and now she played last year, right? She comes in, Larry, and she's got the glove on her left hand because she's right-handed. Sure. And then, and then she looks at me and goes, Daddy, which hand does the glove? And I went, the, the right hand. She goes, oh. So she puts the glove on backwards on the right hand, and I'm sitting there waiting for her to finally go, no. And finally she does, but I thought, you know, I tried to convince her to go out for track because she can run. But she's, she's trying to do softball, and she doesn't know which hand the glove goes on, so good luck well, with softball. I mean, you know, aren't those thumbs on a certain side? <laughs> well, I guess, yeah. but I don't know. Maybe if you played baseball, you know, for your whole life, you kind of just assume that you know how the glove goes. But plus, oh, if you played it the year before, you would think you'd remember. But anyway, that's another story. It's okay. Fun- it's funny with kids because my kids, they, you know, they all had different interests, right? And uh, my, my middle daughter became a black belt in karate. Really? And she's really, really good at it. Second degree. She really was into it. Uh, but she could. She tried to play soccer. She couldn't play. She couldn't kick. She couldn't kick. She would be kicking up into the air, and the ball would be on the ground. And she's she like, was, "So what are you doing? Kick the ball. It's pretty simple." But she had been trained to kick certain karate way. kicks. She could never play soccer. The other ones played great soccer. But just how you know, to each their own, right? Is this the one that made you a grandfather? No, this is my middle daughter. My okay. older daughter made me a grandfather. Just over the, this past week. Just this we past just week. Yeah, show. Harper Ava. She's beautiful. Uh, we are blessed. She is for sure. Uh, all right, Larry. Let's get down to the meat and potatoes here. Uh, the combine first. The restaurant? Did you visit? I, re- I, re- I, vi- I visited. It? I too. can't remember it off the top. Saint Elmo's is the place Saint that Elmo's. everybody talks about. But you know what? I, I'm not going to say anything bad about a place that's but it's a not really what good it used place. to be. Well, you know, you, it depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for uh, the big crowd, I guess both Prime Forty Seven and Elmo's uh, Saint Elmo's are the same. Saint Elmo's has the shrimp cocktail, which everybody thinks is the greatest thing around. It, it is very tangy. It, the secret is the sauce, not the shrimp. Uh, there, I don't think there's a lot of shrimp in Indianapolis. Those it's shrimp the Midwest. Are, I don't think they get. There's not even a river that goes by. If there were <laughs> shrimp in that area, but maybe a not. couple lakes around there. But uh, those shrimp are, are brought in from Southeast Asia, I believe. Probably. You know. So and, and the steaks are very thin. So if you're going to go there and get a steak, really, they're pretty thin. But you can get the hundred dollar bone in. Now that's a whole different. That's all different. But if you go to Prime Forty Seven. Uh, it's a younger crowd. It's a hipper crowd. There's a lot more action there, and the steaks are really thick. The steaks, I guess, 
there's the difference between prime and choice. Is that yeah? You know the difference between those, don't prime you? Prime is the top cut of meat. It's yeah. been aged. It's got a certain amount of marbling in it. Yes. And then from then, I guess it is choice. There used to be a good, but yeah, choice is yeah, the so next I one. Yeah, I think it's that kind of thing. Uh, I really enjoyed the the meal at Prime Forty Seven. I enjoyed the meal at St. Elmo's as well. But I think the atmosphere. Uh, at Prime 47, there was an article written in the paper about it where all the coaches go there, all the owners go there, everybody's there. In fact, there's at a... At Elmo's? No, at Prime, Prime 47. 47. And uh, there's a there's a guy by the name of Bob DeMott who's a agent for coaches. He's the agent for Jay and uh, Sean McVay and John Groot. He's the agent for a whole bunch of coaches. Mm -hmm. And he has been going to this place, Prime 47, I, the article said, for the last 20 years. And he's got the corner table in the front cordoned off for the whole week he gets there at about seven he leaves at like 3 a.m every day every night every night and he just holds court he invites people in uh it's quite it's quite a scene it's quite a you, you should go next did year. you did you get invited to the court no i didn't go to his table we had our own thing going on right. I, I i do know him he's a super guy uh, but I, I'm not going to go where I'm not invited, John. That's just that. Well, I don't, I'd never go any place I'm not invited. I figured you might yeah. get an invite just through Jay, perhaps. Yeah, no. You know, happy birthday to Jay, by the way. It was his birthday yesterday. All right. Uh, I believe he is 52. I think that's how old he is. You know how old he is? 52. Devontae 52. says 52. Okay, yeah. And so, but the thing about the combine, which is really striking, I love your thoughts on this. It's as much a football convention. You got these agents, you got, and the free agency that begins next week, that that pot starts to cook at the combine with the agents and the team personnel there. You guys are unaware that free agency begins next week. Yes. Well, what, what, so you've kind of set up the scene, but would you say, how would you compare the combine? I know they're, they're not anywhere comparable because it's a completely different crowd, yet it's shifting to the Super Bowl, which was just held, because I'm wondering... There's so many people that come to town, I'm guessing. How many? I would like to know. I mean, oh, just thousands just, of people. Yeah. Thousands of people. And the place is packed. It's just, and Indianapolis has these these walkways. You really never have to go outside. So to go from the hotel that everybody stays at, the Marriott, to the actual facility, Lucas Oil Stadium, it's probably about a mile and a half walk. Mm -hmm. Never have to step outside, inside the whole way. So as you're walking down the corridor, You'll see some, hey, Jim Tom saw Jim Tom still. Hey, what's going on? You just see people walking to wherever they got to go. And it's uh, a reunion of sorts. I think there's a lot of business that goes on there that isn't really talked about very much. You know, the 40s and the bench presses, everybody loves that. But setting the table for free agency or possibly trades, you see guys huddled in the corners everywhere you go, and you wonder, oh, yeah, they're cutting a deal over there. Wonder who they're talking about. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and everybody's there. So. To me, it's as much a football convention as it is the measurables for the college players coming out. And some players, stocks going up. Uh, the kid from Mississippi State who ran the 4-4-40 sweat. Uh, Fred Smoot tipped what, us off to him last what week. What position? Defensive end, 260-pounder, 4-4. I mean, ridiculous. I think it's a record for a defensive lineman. It almost had to be, I would think. Ridiculous. So, I was going to tell me it was a DB, and I'm going, well, okay, that's pretty good speed for a DB. This guy's 6'5", 260, and he's the defensive end. So last week, Smoot told us, here's a guy under the radar. He ain't under the radar anymore, not after running like that. So that's, that's the kind of stuff you see. Well, did you – I mean, what was a typical day for you? Because obviously you had a bunch of shows to do. So yeah. did you – unlike – and I'm wondering, the typical person that goes there with, with all the scouts – they can only be in so many places at once. I, what do you do? Look at the results, or are there people you're, that they're looking to see? Do you have any idea? Do you get any feedback from you know the team scouting department of yes what they go there for? I did, but first, okay, take a break. I'm gonna tell you about Coke Industries do helping that. people improve their lives, which should drive business. That's the belief at Coke Industries. They employ more than sixty-five thousand people across America. The team at Coke works together to meet the world's changing needs: transportation, medical care water filtration, household goods, energy-efficient building products, and everyday technologies, all while consuming fewer resources. See the innovations firsthand at kochindustries.com. Uh, this is John Riggins. I think you already know that. Uh, I got a question for you. Is your plumbing ship shape? Would it pass the O'Connor plumbing white glove test? All right, just two questions, but A lot of us put crucial decisions off because we know doing the right thing costs money, but a head-in-the-sand approach costs more money. Look, O'Connor Plumbing gets it. 
They're going to help you finance any of your plumbing needs, which is going to take a lot of stress out of your day. If you play with water, you're going to get soaked. Call O'Connor Plumbing at 1-833-RIGGLE44 and ask about their special financing options. Here's a little tip. If you need a mortgage, use the pros at McLean Mortgage. Buying a home can be stressful, filled with hassles. The experts at McLean Mortgage understand what an important financial investment your home is and will seamlessly guide you through the process to successful home ownership. Smooth, amazing, easy, professional, and first rate. Just some of the reviews from the tens of thousands of homeowners. Trust McLean Mortgage. Check them out. McLeanMortgage.com lending as it should be. Who's bored? Who's broke? And who's back? I wanted to always see the Redwoods. I wanted to see the Rocky Mountains. I wanted to see the Painted Desert, the Petrified Forest, the Grand Canyon. That was like the land that I always wanted to go to. John Riggins. Indy wasn't on that list? I used to go through Indy uh, twice a year back in the days when I played for the Jets, going back east on I-70 in the summertime and back west on I-70 in the wintertime, always before Christmas, I might add. Now, that's they only played 14 games, but the Jets had it all wrapped up. When I say wrapped up, I mean our season was over with by that, uh, I think it was probably usually a week before Christmas we were all done. No playoffs for us. So, typical day at the Combine for me. Uh, and our crew, and I got to say, Devontae was there. Uh, Devontae did a great job. Asa, Jenkins, they all did a great job. So we'd have a crew call at 9 o'clock, and then uh, by 10 o'clock we would shoot Redskins Nation, and then by 11 o'clock we were preparing for whatever interview we had. So we had Kyle Smith one day, who's the head of college scouting for the Redskins. We went down to the hotel where they do the interviews with the players every night, and we sat him down, talked about these interviews. Very, very cool process. I want to tell you about that in a second. And one day we interviewed Jay Gruden, sit down half hour. Uh, same thing with Doug Williams. And we would, uh, we, we're actually using that material now on Redskins Nation. And then we'd go over to the facility uh, where the workouts, so I say the facility, the stadium, mm-hmm. where the workouts would take place. So it was just after lunch? After lunch and, you know, do whatever we got to do. One day they're doing some interviews. One day we're shooting B-roll in the suite where the Redskins are posted up in. Then, of course, there's the obligatory evening out with the guys. And I spent a lot of time with J.P. Finley and Mitch Tischler. Of and that's NBC every Sports. night. That's every and night. And it's John. mandatory. It's mandatory. And there is no curfew. Or you're called a wimp. Self-impo- and... Self-imposed curfew. Oh, okay. And so by about the third night, you know, you're imposing that curfew. I was imposing my curfew on the third night. But okay, so you got there on a Monday? Got there on t- Tuesday. Tuesday. By that- Thursday, Thursday night, what time did you go to bed? Oh, gosh, midnight. And I oh, thought I was coming home Saturday. Friday night? Did you come home Friday night? I came home Friday morning. Oh. I got a text at 6 a.m. from my daughter. And so by 1130, I was on a plane coming home. And she had the baby uh, at 445. And so I'm glad I came home. I would have been coming home Saturday. And I'm glad I did because I was there with – you're not there. It's kind of funny, you know. It was like I'm in India. My, my wife says, you're not going to be there when the baby is born? I said, be where? Be, be at the hospital? I said, I'm not going to be in the room. No, my father wasn't there when you had the kids. And she goes, you know, you make a point there. And so, yeah. you know, we're not the parents. I was going to say parents, you know, particularly the mom should be there, I would guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but right. the father is usually nowadays. But that was frowned upon 40 years ago. The yeah. father had to go to work. He wasn't there in the delivery room. Father pacing, smoking cigarettes in yeah. the waiting room. Unless but, it was after hours, you know. It was yeah. during work time. I don't know how many guys made it to the uh, delivery room. But I will tell you this. The Combine, again, you probably learn more walking around the city, talking to people that you might know. Know a lot of people in the mm-hmm. business, obviously, both on the team side. On the team side, like old coaches the Redskins had. I saw Greg Williams there, a bunch of other guys. And they're also on the media side where you know guys – who you've known for a long time. and uh, you, I ran into Jeff Joniak, who does what I do for the Chicago Bears, the voice of the Bears, and he was telling me, Khalil Mack, one play, never seen one player make that much of a difference on a team ever. Completely turned the Bears around, for the most part, Yes, in his opinion. Yes, and you probably could kind of sense it because their defense was good. They were great with him. And then uh, Trubisky, the quarterback guy, didn't have a lot of confidence. Boy, he was brimming with confidence. He told me... He infected the entire locker room, Khalil Mack did, with a positive, hard-nosed attitude that was not there before he got there. 
Well, let's get back to, you know, what would the, you know, we talked about free agents a little bit. Uh, I might be jumping the gun here, no. but I kind of like to get into that because obviously there's a couple of rumors that have surfaced since the weekend. Yep. One involves uh, the quarterback in Arizona, Josh Rosen. The other involves the wide receiver of the Pittsburgh Steelers, which is Antonio Brown. Both uh, of the rumors also involve the Burgundy and Gold. Uh, I suppose you could tell us, but then you'd have to kill everybody here on, well, and then go out and try to get know, yeah. anybody that's watching the podcast. So <laughs> I don't know whether to ask you that question. Well, here's, here's but, what, I can respond to that. Do you, think, is, is there any, you think there's any merit to any of this stuff? I mean, there's got to be some merit to some of it, but there's also a fountain of misinformation which comes around, and it always happens at the draft. It seems to happen now around free agency as well. Redskins aren't going to sign all those players. They're not going to be able to sign all those players. Correct. So to have discussions, to say they're interested, and then you got to consider the sources you're hearing. You're hearing it from media people who really probably don't know, or that information could be planted, or it could be an agent trying to drum up a little business for their guy. So until they walk in the door here at Redskins Park, I don't believe any of it. Uh, today, the latest thing, Atlantic Collins, uh, safety for the Giants, uh, has not been tagged. Has he been tagged yet? He's got till 4 o'clock today to tag him, right? That's Devontae shaking his head. You can't so, speak, you know. Okay. Uh, so what, I'm not quite up to speed on how this whole thing works. So if they tag him today, obviously they, that puts him into a whole other category. If they don't, is today the cutoff for free agency and it begins next week? I, uh, I think if they wanted to sign him to a long-term contract, they have until you know the start of the new league year to do so. And that begins? That begins next Wednesday, the 13th. So if March. you don't have a guy signed to a long-term contract, anybody whose option is up or if there is an option, right. they now fall into the free agency right. pool? You have a right to sign your own guys. So the Redskins could do the same with Preston Smith right up until the 13th or, okay. or the, even right. the 12th, whatever. But at that moment in time, that's when that all stops and now he's a free agent. And you can yes. still always get him back, but they go out and test the market. Yes. And again, you, if you franchise tag a player, you can rescind the tag. So if they were to tag Landon Collins, which they haven't yet – uh, then he would remain a giant. He'd have to get paid a portion. Was it five, the uh, average, average of the top five, five? Top five, yeah. Uh, but just like what the Carolina Panthers did with Josh Norman, they rescinded the tag, pretty much cutting him. And the Redskins jumped in and grabbed Josh. So uh, that's that process, I believe. But for the Redskins, you, know, you got a couple guys: Jamison Crowder, Preston Smith. Uh, I think the team loves those guys. Uh, I think, though, if you can't cut a deal long term that is good for you, you're going to have to let them test the market. More times than not, when they test the market, they move on because somebody's going to pay more than you're willing to pay. That's the way it looks. Well, and let's, let's, let's deal with my contention, Larry, or what I would say is not a contention really, but the uh, way I see the things right now is I still think there's a huge question mark at the quarterback position. And to me, then that would make the Josh Rosen deal kind of, I mean, why, I mean, obviously, this is what's crazy is their coaches come in now and said, eh, I'm not quite, I don't think this is a great fit. We got the number one overall pick, Kyler uh, Murray. Yeah, he's the guy I think that we're, they're leaning towards, which in itself, I'm thinking if you're Arizona, that's a hell of a crapshoot. I would almost have to think if you were Arizona and you're going to take him, the, the Oklahoma quarterback, Heisman Trophy winner, if you're going to take him, you'd almost, I, I, it finally dawned on me because he clearly is saying, well, I want to play football. But that's just what he's saying. Once he sees the numbers and he gets the baseball, he's got a baseball deal. and try, He could always go, you know what, I changed my mind. I would have to think, and I don't know if it's even legal or possible, that they would have to get a commitment in writing from him that he will give them two years on a football field. Otherwise, why would you draft somebody you don't really know for sure which way he's going to go? That, that's insane. I'm sure he saw Bryce Hopper's contract. I'm sure he saw those numbers, and he did, he did comment on those. Because I think Bryce Harper... Devante, twenty six million a year. Is that what he is? I thought like it was three thirty for twelve or something like that. Isn't yeah, it? I think I think it's. I saw the numbers. It's under thirty million a year for the entirety for however many years it is. Yeah, it's which, close to that. It's close. It to averages that. to like twenty five. Yeah, a year. so okay. you know, I think isn't isn't uh, Aaron Rodgers making more than that per year? I think, I think so. Kirk Cousins is making more than that per year. Yes, he is. That is correct. So that was Kyler Murray's. But rationale. he doesn't have a guarantee for twelve years. True. It's got to be really good to get that kind of money, though. Yeah, you don't get beat up like these guys. Or you have to but, create uh, the illusion that you're really good. Yeah. That's, true. That's true. That's what I did. Yeah, but create you, you make a great point, and that, that is, uh, I think that is an issue when it comes to Kyler Murray. First, it was his height, so he measured taller than Oklahoma, uh, had measured him. You figure the hometown guys gave him about a half inch or so, and they didn't. 
His his measurement was five ten and an eighth, so he's still short, comparatively speaking. His nine and a half inch hand, I don't know. That's not very big, correct? I don't think so. Yeah. I, I mean, so. you ever measured your hands? I don't know. I mean, is, it, is glove size by, based on inches? Because Let's get I'm that over guess, here. Measure his hand. I'm going to guess you? that it's... Help uh, him out, Devontae. I I'm think gonna, it goes from... Am I out tiny hands? From point to point. Of from, the, from pinky the, to thumb Yeah, to you pinky. spread your hands out from pinky. Nine. He's nine. got nine. That's no, no. What's, no. A, what's, a, what's a big-handed quarterback? I don't know. Doug Williams got some big hands. He's probably got about an 11, right? Whoa. Oh, Doug. There. Doug is a big... Well, Doug's a big guy anyway. Yeah, we got to get Doug on a show, man. Palm in a basket. Where is he at? Busy. He's busy. Yeah, after the after free agency, Always we'll get Doug. Busy after free agency. Busy man right now. Well, anyway, about free well, but get, so then that makes the. Uh, I don't know. I mean, to me, the Josh Rosen. I mean, it's hard for me that they drafted a quarterback first round last year, and all of a sudden they want a different quarter. I mean, that looks. I mean, who? You look back at your scouting. Well, your general manager, or somebody. He's still there. It's the same general manager. I mean, you change coaches, and the coach goes, "I can't deal with this guy. I want this guy." I don't that's know, a man. little. That's kind of high maintenance, right out of the blocks with your head coach, isn't it? I mean, you would think. I think it is, you, and you know, that's that's Kingsbury, the guy who came in there. Yeah. He's got zero what, experience. Texas A&M, is that what yeah, it was? Zero experience, and honestly, you know, you take a look at that. What are they going to get in a trade? If they were to trade him, what are you going to get? That's almost like well, it's not quite like when you take a new car off the yeah off the exactly. lot depreciation immediately yeah, but tenfold. So he, so they gave up a first round draft pick for Rosen last year. They're not going to get that for him no. again this year. They won't even no, close, no right? No way, no way, no way. Devontae is holding up so, three fingers. But let me, do, you, do you? I don't know much about Rosen. Is he a potential fit for this football team? I don't know. Or is it know. just pie in the sky? I, it's I, I. Who knows? I don't. I. You know, I remember him in college. I remember both him and Sam Darnold in college, and I watched them in college two years ago. And to be honest with you, I. I wasn't impressed with either one of those guys mm-hmm. in college. But, they, hey, I'm no pro scout. I'm just here. I'm the radio TV guy here, so what do I know? Well, things you know? can change in a year, that's for sure. And Antonio Brown would be a big splash for this That is team. an interesting thought there. That is an interesting thought because he's extremely talented and he's extremely distracting. Distracting, i.e., off the field. Yes. So yes. And now they've you know they've got these highlights of him. One tantrum. Every tantrum he's ever thrown in his whole NFL career has been tied together into one long highlight. They keep playing it on TV. And it's like he's throwing Gatorade. He's doing this. Gary Clark used to do that. And they said he had a lot of passion. Well, so maybe the guys, you know. You know, here's the difference, too, Larry. I was just thinking as you said that is that, that uh, Pittsburgh and New York. If he was in New York, he wouldn't know who Beckham was, right? Right. I mean, seriously. Yeah. Think about that. Because I got to believe he probably has every bit as much high maintenance, if not more. Than Beckham. More, I think. Yeah, that's my point. More. But but doesn't everybody kind of think Beckham is the poster child for a high maintenance wide receiver? The receivers are divas. Oh yes. They're just divas. That's what I say. The football's played between the tackles. That's where the mud and the blood and the beer is. These guys on the edge, eh, I don't know. It's not quite the same for them. I, you know, Different job description. I I will say this though. I will say this about you, John Riggins, and I want your comment on this, then we'll take this very quick okay. break. You of course uh made some headlines when you got the Mohawk you always wanted. Yes. And because you could. Finally. Because, because I finally felt we, that I was in control of it. We've that. told that story. Now, uh, Antonio Brown has a blonde mustache. Have you seen his blonde no, mustache? I heard about I didn't know what they were talking about. He, I, did, I, I talked to, about this. Yeah, he's got a blonde mustache. And why? Because he can. I mean, I couldn't get away with that. If I came in here with hair like Ric Flair, do you think I'd get away with that? <laughs> I don't know. With blonde hair. just No, I couldn't get away with that. I, you're giving me ideas, Larry. For you, <laughs> not me. I've done the hair thing, so I'm know, good. I don't know if I'm going to do that. I got out of my system. So early. what do you think about his blonde mustache? I haven't seen it yet, but uh, it's, you know, let's face it. Uh, nowadays, and uh, 40 years ago, a guy with a tattoo was like, ooh, you know. Yeah. There weren't many of them. Now, I mean, most people in basketball, particularly basketball, but maybe that's only because you can see everybody, yeah. just about anything you can name, whether it be film, in other words, actors, athletes, they got them, like, they start here and they end down at the ri- I mean, they're all over the place. So just an example of where, as a culture, where things have gone in this country and perhaps around the world, and I, you know, I can't speak to every place else, but so to see somebody do something a little unusual and uh, I think it's finally been accepted with the way everything has evolved, particularly in sports. 
you know, it's kind of kind of like living in New York City. If you don't have tolerance, don't live in New York City because you're going to see stuff up there, hear stuff up there that you might not be used to. Yeah, no doubt about and that. And it's going to it's going to definitely you know tighten up your day a little bit if you're non tolerant. I want to ask you about free agency real okay. quick though. Extreme opportunity to win millions of dollars is ahead. The extreme million scratcher could get you thir- ten million dollars without you having to do anything extreme at all. Game has a ten million dollar top prize, a one million dollar second prize. And over $256 million in total prizes in the entire game. All you have to do is head to your local lottery retailer. This game will make even the dullest winter day sparkle. You have 30 chances to win per ticket. Multipliers in the game, too. You have a non-winning ticket. You can enter into the second chance drawing in April for a $1 million top prize. Should you check out Extreme Millions? That's an extremely easy question to answer. Your heart works hard. And sometimes, its parts need repair. That's what we do at Anova's Structural Heart Program in Fairfax. With outcomes that exceed the national average, we're a leader in both minimally invasive repair techniques and surgery to address heart valve disease. Give your heart the benefit of care from Anova Heart and Vascular Institute. Find an Anova physician by visiting anovaheart.org slash valve. Anova, join the future of health. Who sat here? Your student? A peer? Your best friend? What did they grow up to be? A scientist? A nurse? An entertainer? Did you know it back then that they were made to stand out? Celebrate the extraordinary people made in Virginia public schools. Nominate a public school graduate for the Virginia Lottery's Made in Virginia Award. Details at madeinvirginia.com. Deadline October 12th. The Virginia Lottery. $9 billion to education. 30 years of fun. Gearing up for game day? Your local Safeway has everything you need for the perfect tailgating or home gating party. Pick up all your favorites like wings, chips and dips, brats, burgers, beverages, and pizza. Stop by the deli to pick up fresh fried chicken or the produce department for a variety of party trays. Head on over to your local Safeway and pick up everyone's favorites. Safeway, the official supermarket of the Washington Redskins. Sports fans of all kinds have a new place to connect, Asbury Methodist Village. You have a competitive spirit or just like to be active, Asbury has everything you need. Tennis and bocce ball courts, a fitness center and pool, plus whatever team you root for, you'll find kindred spirits at Asbury. Come for a tour and check out everything Montgomery County's leading senior living community has to offer. Visit asburymethodistvillage.org to schedule a tour and find more information on our services and top-notch reputation. That's asburymethodistvillage.org. Asbury is an equal opportunity housing provider. Have you been fumbling on your diet during tailgate season? Well, it's a new day for a new game. And White House Foods has the solution for you. With the vinegar beverage of choice, Detox. Packed with lemon, honey, cinnamon, and apple cider vinegar, this organic, non-GMO verified product is the play you need to get your head back in the game. From our orchard fields to your football field, White House. John, free agency. What do you got? Were you a free? A- were you one of the first free agents? How did your free agency Let, unfold? Well, let's start way back at the beginning, from what I recollect, because we're talking about over forty years ago. Is that that this is one of the hardships that a lot of the players played under until nineteen ninety three, which is really almost like in time, you know, what is it, BC and A A D, <laughs> that you have a period in the NFL where things dramatically changed for future players as opposed to the players that played before. There was no such thing as free agency. Technically, when I say technically, that didn't exist either. You had what you signed, a contract that had an option year in it. That op- So let's just say it was a three- two-year contract with, a th- with an option for a third year. If you wanted to play out your option, you had the right to do that. It cost you 10% of your salary. So if you were making, you know, $20,000 in your in your option year or I should say in your second year of this two-year contract with the option, that third year option you would get $18,000. You take a pay cut of $10,000 to play out your option. Okay. Then when you played out your option and you went and talked to team A, B, and C, whoever may be interested in employing you, that you'd come to whatever, you know, it never got that far, I don't believe, because basically there was something called the Roselle Rule. Are you familiar with that? I remember. I don't remember. If you remember it better than me, explain I, I, it. But I, I, what it got down to, if I'm not mistaken, 
that Pete Rosell, who was the commissioner at the time, had just he had the complete authority over this. It was you know complete autonomy over the compensation. So if you were going to leave your team and go to another team, Pete Rosell would very could very likely say uh, that it's going to cost the team that you're leaving or that you're going to two first round draft picks. Well, that completely just dampened the entire f- alleged free agency. Who's going to so, do that? So nobody, so nobody changed teams. Now, this is what gets, where it gets kind of interesting, because here I was in New York. I'd played there for five years in 1975, and I, they had a general manager. I mean, and my option year was coming up. My fifth year was, my, was an option year. I could have signed a contract prior to that and stayed in New York. And I didn't even, I mean, I was my own attorney, which tells you all you need to know about, you know, what is it, if you had a fool for a client or whatever it is, which way that is. But anyway, I thought, well, I'll just play out my option because this is ridiculous, the amount of money they're offering me. Unfortunately, unknown to me that the Jets were kind of tight with their money and all the money went to Joe Namath. So I figured besides with Joe there, it probably isn't going to really, my career will be basically as a backup kind of to the superstar on the team. And I had no idea how much longer Joe was going to be there. So I said, well, I'll play out my option. Well, that was kind of stupid. As it turned out, just by sheer dumb luck, it wasn't. I happened to hit a place in the NFL where at the end of that year, and I played out my option, I forget, I think I had made $70,000 a year before. So I made 63000 that my, my that that option year so i took my 10 percent cut now all of a sudden i'm just kind of drifting along not really you know okay where do you go from here because i would have had to go out and say talk to al davis in oakland because he had been interested in me at one time and say al what do you what do you want to do here well then pete rosell would have got involved in it and said well to the first ones. round draft pick yeah. i just gained a thousand yards they'd say well al you got to give him two first round draft picks i would have said gee whiz that's a little I'll bit scare steep him for off me. exactly that ain't going to work but what happened was, the best of my recollection, I believe there was a judge in Minnesota, and somehow, and I can't remember who it was, had brought free this Roselle rule across his desk. And he ruled that the Roselle rule was illegal. All right, so there was a period, and I'm going to guess this started about in March, maybe April, of 1976. And there was about an eight-week period, I'm going to guess, maybe that all of a sudden when he said it was illegal there were myself calvin hill was one but he had been playing in the wfl for the hawaiians and i think gene fugit was another and there was another a couple other and i think fred dreyer was another one of the people that fell into this free agency deal that for whatever reason there was it was complete unrestricted free agency because there was the nfl wasn't prepared for this judge's ruling and they didn't have anything like a you know the franchise tag and any of this stuff so so for a moment in time that window opened and i'm going to guess it was about eight weeks long i slipped out of that i visited with some different teams i I went to minnesota i went to houston i went to los angeles i went to new orleans and i came here and after visiting all those different teams i decided this would be the best fit for me and i was able to sign a contract with washington and then the nfl as you got to figure they would do they got an injunction and stopped the Rose stopped this and the Roselle rule was reinstituted not to be visited again until 1993 so literally I slipped through the door and the door closed behind me and I came down here the Jets didn't get they didn't get zip bupkis they got bupkis exactly so, so there was a window of opportunity because of the ruling while the NFL appealed and you became yep. a Redskin who did you negotiate with it would have been back in those days it would have been Edward Bennett Williams no, I didn't. I had a friend of mine in Kansas that did, that did the actual negotiations. I met with him. I'll never forget. That was an interesting story. I flew into town. A guy by the name of Dick Myers picked me up at the airport, flew into National. He drove me out here, and, you know, George Washington Parkway. I'm going, oh, I've never been to D.C. before. This is kind of cool. We come out here. I meet with Coach Allen. And then that night, there was a meeting down at the Palm, which was one of Ed Williams's, Edward Bennett Williams, who was, who was actually kind of the, he was running the team at the time, but I believe Mr. Cook still owned the controlling like interest managing but he had mr cook was busy uh getting divorced out in, in in las vegas i think or whatever he was getting ready to set the record for the highest price divorce at his time the most money ever given up in a divorce so anyway ed williams ran so here i am eating now i didn't you know i gotta admit i didn't know who edward bennett williams was but let's face it i was way out of my league 
We had Edward Bennett was one of his attorneys who also did some stuff for the football team, Robert Shulman, the late Robert Shulman, well, and the late Edward Bennett Williams, and the late George Allen. There was those three guys and, um, and myself, and we were sitting in a booth at the Palm, I guess probably Ed Williams' favorite booth. And so Was Tommy there? Tommy Giacomo, was he there? He probably was in there someplace. But at the time, you know, I'm just – been the first time I'd ever been in there, so I didn't know anything. So, it was the uh, the four of us, and basically, you know, I was I looked like a suburban banker. I had a suit on and all this stuff, which Ed Williams had, you know, figured me for the bib overalls, the mohawk. He like, what, what, where did you come from? Yeah. But anyway, it, it, it everything worked out fine. So, you know, it uh, rolled along for a few years, and here we are today. Hey, you know what? That should be your final word. That's a great story. You heard it here. All right, let's let it be my final word. I'm good. See you next week. Good enough.